way we're going, Randy. Mike Howard on the rod. Diamond Dave, you want to take that weight rod yep. for me on that side? I want to say, how deep are you here, Randy? What's your speed? Yeah, you can ease it up just a little if you want. Ease it up just a little bit. Mike, how's he feeling? Feeling good. Purple clown. Purple clown, Dave says on that one. I think you're right on the inside there. And of course, here's what we're running, everybody. There is the Okuma 20D, and we got that loaded on uh, seven and a half foot dead eye. It's a good fish right here. He's got some weight. Yep, both hips here came on inside rods. Close to the bow. How deep are you, Randy? Bring it a little bit to the right. Come up the shoreline here. With the murky water conditions here today, everybody, what we're doing is we're running just a little bit tighter sap. Instead of running the typical 150, 140, 130, we're just doing 130, 120, and 110. So uh, both of the hits here that we've had so far today have come on the 110 sets on the inside. No weight on that, just running the base uh, Michigan Stinger Spoon pattern. Six baits here, a lot of chartreuse and a lot of green in the pattern today. In the turbid, murky water condition, we've been in contact uh, with some of our buddies up the shoreline just a little bit. You've got a hell of a brown on there, Mike. And uh, the, the bite's on hot up in front of us, but we're still fishing cross country this morning, trying to find a big brown up here on the cobble rock, and I believe that's what we've got locked on. What are you feeling there, buddy boy? So when you get close here, here comes the business end. Brandy, nice fish. You're going to come my way and let Dave get between you. Beautiful fish right here, Dave. Beautiful brown. This is one of the ones that we want right here. Mike, you're going to come my way when the time comes. Let's move them to the center, Mike, where we got room to work on them. Okay, Randy, slow her down. Big, giant brown. Big, giant brown. Raise them up. Get them, Dave. Man, what a fish. Holy smokes. Give me a little juice. Look at that guy. Oh, Fat Nancy. I had it right the first time, Randy. Brandy faked you out, did he? Look at that brown right there. Just an absolute stud. Coming on the Fat Nancy there. Well, there's no surprise. We called that a little bit wrong, but that's still it. There it is. The Fat Nancy right there. Not a surprise. Beautiful brown, huh, Dave? Coming uh, coming just west of Hungerford, coming out of that pocket right there. Deep side of the boat, big fish. Yeah, he smoked the inside. We just had that conversation in the cabin, didn't we? Yep. Get, uh, get away from the boat traffic, find yourself a big brown, hunting all by himself out there. Yep, and we talked about that being in on the Cobble Rock, Mike. And that fish was laying right in there. No surprise that a jumby brown like that comes in that position. He is just a dandy. Good job. Good going, fellas. We're locked up again on a big fish. It's a really big fish. He jumps a lot. Mike, I want you to go ahead and clear that weight rod. Come underneath with everything there as quickly as you can. Randy, go over the top of his head. You're longer than Mike's. So you guys are going to switch sides. One of the keys to successfully catching these big fish is making sure that uh, you do the doe see doe that you're in the right position. So here, what we did was we just went underneath with that wave right here. Neutral, Dave. Big giant brown right here. Mike, I want you over on this other side between Randy. All right. Big, big fish here. Wind down to him, Randy. We're all messed up here. All right, back up, forward. Dave, get him, Mike. Hurry up, get him. Big giant brown. Forward on the purple clown. Just a giant fish right there. Acting like a king the whole way. That is a dandy brown right there. That's the way it's supposed to be. He started way out on the inside, Randy, and he ended up going all the way out under the poor board and catching that inside line. Got us in a little bit of a snafu. But but we got him clean at any rate. We made the dance. Yeah, we made the dance and we and we got him. Let's hang him right straight up and down for me. What a beautiful, beautiful brown that is. Coming in perfectly. And uh, that's a dandy fish, and I'll tell you what, let's, uh, we've got a little bit of activity going on today, but one of the things that gives you an edge in brown trout fishing in the spring of the year is that uh, we try to keep these baits just as nice and clean as we possibly can when we're fishing them. So today, 
it's not so much a segment on technique or how fast we go or where we go to catch these browns but how we keep the presentation of the lures looking good let's go back to the brown trout lodge right now and uh, we'll show them a little product called twinkle and what we do to keep those spoons looking good and that folks right there that right there is the end result. One of the keys to success in a spring brown trout fishing like we're enjoying today here in Lake Ontario is making sure that the tackle, the terminal stuff that that brown trout sees in the water, whether it's gin clear or whether it's murky, that those baits are absolutely looking in pristine condition. If you take a look at uh, an example like this, here's a Michigan Stinger Stingray. This is a large one there, um, green dolphin. You can see how shiny that spoon is. That's a brand new spoon that's never seen the water. Now, some of the spoons that were in the box today, I didn't bring them, but there's a couple old spoons here. Here's an old Stingray, and you can see how dirty the surface of this is. This one's got some paint off it and what have you, but it's generally tarnished. Here's an old NK28 that's dirty. This was purple and white. I'm gonna peel that right off, but I just wanted to demonstrate how to clean the silver and keep those spoons looking in good condition. What I got right here in my hand is a product that we've been using for 30 years probably, and it's called Twinkle. Twinkle Silver Polish Kit. This is nice, you can buy these in most grocery stores, you can find this online. This stuff is absolutely the best stuff that I've found over the years for rehabbing these lures and putting them in the condition that you need to catch fish. Now there is some scent to this, but it's a paste and it comes with a, a sponge and you wet that sponge so that it's just a little bit damp and you get some of that polish on that sponge. Once you've got that on the sponge, you simply spread it all over the, all over the surface of that spoon. I'm gonna get just a little bit more paste out of here and we'll cover that spoon from the top to the bottom with that. Let's do this NK28 here as well. And you can see that that, that twinkle forms a, a, a paste, a hazy paste on the top of that spoon. Put it on a condition just like that. And then what we're gonna do, the directions say to polish it, but I'm gonna show you the trick that I've learned over the years that's really good. We're just gonna lay those spoons down, put the twinkle back away, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait. All we're gonna do is give that some time. If you're doing this between fish strikes on the boat on a sunny day, it's great. You can paste up a few lures, put them out on the cooler, and in the sunshine and the warm weather of the summer, that paste is gonna harden almost immediately. We're gonna take a break in the action right now. We're gonna let that paste get dry and watch what happens when I come back in just a minute through the miracle of television, you're gonna see how great these spoons turn out. We just gotta let this twinkle break dry just for a little bit. Be right back with you. So we've waited about five minutes and now it's time to polish our spoon. You can see here I've got just a plain white paper towel. We're gonna to flip that spoon over, hold it in our hand, and watch what happens as we rub the surface of this spoon. You can see how bright and shiny that spoon is becoming. So I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna rub the cup of the spoon and I'm gonna clear all of that polish off that spoon. And what I'm gonna show you is gonna, is gonna be astounding. We're gonna just rub that, we're gonna clear that. Have a look at this. There is the black tarnish on that that came off the surface of that spoon. And that spoon is bright and shiny and looking like it just came out of the package new. We were losing some paint on the front of this spoon, but we'll still we'll still just rub the, the top surface of this bait. We'll get as much of that polish off of that spoon as we possibly can. You can see all the black tarnish that comes off on that cloth. So now you've got a spoon that's get my fingerprints off it. That's nice and bright, shiny and silver. We're still missing paint on this side, but that spoon is ready, ready to rehab with, with tape or do whatever you want to do and clean that up and put that back into production as a quality spoon. Twinkle Silver Polish is what it is. That's what we use. There is some scent to this. So now that this is done, I recommend either 
rinsing this off in the sink or using some herring or alewife oil, spread that on the spoon, you know, as a last, uh, as a last step, kind of rub it on the surface and then rinse it off, dry it good, thoroughly, and then it's ready to go back into the tackle box and be put back into service. Having those spoons in good quality condition is critical to taking brown trout. When we talk about these color patterns and what works well in clear water, murky water, and what those dual purpose spoons um, do best for both of those those scenarios. The key is having those spoons, spoons in good shape, good looking, so that uh, you're getting the full effect of those color patterns in addition to the dynamics of the way that spoon runs at different speeds. Those are the things that are going to help you consistently take not only browns, but big browns on a daily basis. We're catching the heck out of these browns on Lake Ontario right now. We've got good clean spoons on the rod. They're running in a perfect scenario. Let's go back to the action. Big Mike Howard locked on inside rod here. This could be a good one. Slow her down, Dave. Big fish right here, pounding it. Pounding it, Mike. Easy on him, easy on him. There you go, wind down. Randy's getting the weight rod cleared right here. Pulling that spoon right in, getting it out of the way. Mikey, how's he feeling? Nice fish right here. Listen, get, do me a favor though. Get your hand up in front of the reel. You're killing me. <laughs> what do you think? You're bass fishing? Huh? I saw four on strength. <laughs> <laughs> still works out. Oh my God! Oh brother! Holy smokes! Keep going, stepping over to your right there a little bit. Yeah, watch the other ones. It's a good, good chance that it's gonna go here. It's a really good fish. Look at the torque in that, Dave. He's got a good, he's got a good fish on. What was funny, Dave, is when. Mike hit that rod when the fish picked it up. He plucked it, and then Mike looked at it. He stopped like that. He looked like he dropped it. Like yeah, he thought it, it slacked up. Then all of a sudden, the cogs engaged again. He was like, "Holy crap! There is one on that rod." That was. I wish I'd had that on tape, but I didn't get it. Ah well. Only 110 with the dirty water. Let's go right over the edge here, everybody, and take a look. You can see how pea green that water is. So instead of running that 150, 140, 130 sped, uh, spread, we're down to a 130, 120, 110. You want to pull that net right there, please, Randy, and get ready for him. How many feet? We're at uh, 15. He's right 15. Here. He's right here, Randy. No, I was wondering why you weren't getting that. Why you weren't getting that out? All right, I'm gonna come right over this side. Slow her down, Dave. Neutral. Big, 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 big brown here. Easy on him. Forward, Dave. Just gonna wind down nice and smooth, Mike. Low rod tip to him as he comes in. We don't put too much up pressure. Keep her, keep her right in gear, Aunt. Dave. You see the bead chain coming up right there. Seven, eight feet to fluorocarbon tip it. Hold on, Randy. Hold on till he gets close. Easy, easy, easy. Go. Get him. Straighten her right up there. Huge chunk of a brown. Huge, huge, huge. Hold him right there. Oh, man. I'm telling you, pull that net right out of the way, dude. That is a pig brown. That is exactly the epitome of a football brown. A little bit of junk on the spoon. That's going to be the last one of the day. There it is. Look at that black widow. Classic, classic spoon, Mike. Hey. Aren't you glad that he was actually on the rod? I knew he was there. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Good fish. We'll take a look so at him here. There's so many ways Randy Pound and I can get Bill excited. You got to know the tricks. That's right. You got to know the tricks. <laughs> there is the Black Widow square in the jaw of that tanker brown. Look at the belly on that dude. Just an absolute pig. That is a good fish. Mike. Well done, dude. That was a good fish on the 110 set. What's the deal today with all the bites on the inside rods? Crazy, right? It is. I mean, consistently all day. Yeah. Had one outside board. That's it. And uh, rest right there on that inside rod. Nice quality fish all day. Yeah, he's a beauty. Good, good brown. Hold him right there. I'm going to get some pictures.